Welcome to today's lesson. Today we are looking at pulleys and gears. Say pulleys and gears. In our last lesson, we talked about six classes of machine, and then we mentioned the pulley. Remember, slip two W, where your P stands for your pulleys. Today we shall be looking at pulley. What is a pulley? A pulley is a simple machine that can make it easier to lift a load or change the direction of what a force those are the two basic things that uh, the machine pulley does so either it is make it easy to lift the load or it is changing the direction of what a force that is basically what a pulley now a pulley is a, a combination of different components you have your hook you have your wheel you have your mounting bracket you have your axle and then you have your rope okay and you will see a setup below this is a combination you can see how the pulley is assembled although this is a fixed pulley all right let's look at the types of pulley there are basically three types of pulley we have your fixed pulley movable pulley and then you have your compound pulley in a full pulley you have the pulley attached to a permanent position that is it does not move and its major work is changing the direction of the force all right what about a movable pulley in the movable pulley you have the load supported by fixed object okay such as a wooden or metal beam and then the other part is supported by a person so what this does is that it helps to reduce what the the effort you need can you see it now yes so it makes it easier to lift a load by making it what lighter to move do you see it yes why we have a compound pulley Compact pulley combine both benefit of the fixed pulley and the movable pulley. Okay, they can change the direction of force as well as reduce the effort required to lift a load. So when you look at the compact pulley, it is actually at least one fixed pulley and one movable pulley. All right, how do pulleys work? Fixed pulleys, how do they work? Let's assume your friend or you and your friend you are building what a tree house. Okay, and then you want to take some load from you know the floor as shown what you will need what is a fixed pulley when you apply a downward force what happens to the load it will go what upward that's how you are changing the direction all right move a pulley you reduce the amount of force but you will not increase the amount of the rope you would have to pull to get the pill to climb the same distance you see it now why because it's a movable pulley and then the way it is designed the design is such a way that you have to extend more rope to draw so because of the design it is much more easier to actually leave the load but you have to draw the rope okay you need a longer rope that's just the way it is designed okay what about the compact pulley if we increase the number of pulley actually it will help us to reduce the force that we need to lift out a load okay so frankly speaking there's a very simple method for determining the mechanical advantage of what compound pulley system all you have to do is count the length of rope okay that supports the weight for example in the picture on the next page there are four lengths which support the weight of 24 kg all right now the mechanical advantages gives us is what is four look at the setup we are using four pulley one pulley two pulley three pulley four pulley that gives us a mechanical advantage of what four and then the load you are about to lift is what 24 kg remember we say mechanical advantage is what output force all over input force the input force that you are going to put into it will be six why because 24 divided by 4 24 is the load which is the output force divided by what the mechanical advantage which is 4 will give you the input force this tells you that you will need 6 kg okay to lift what a 24 kg load you see how important pulley is now you see how it functions so compound pulley system are also called block and then tackle in the picture above you can see that the compound pulley system does not have to take up much space this setup provides the same amount of mechanical advantage as the other 
while taking up more space okay this is called a block and a tackle all right this is another way to arrange the pulley so pulley system in the real world in the real world we use pulley system almost every day okay when we look at machines everywhere such as your sailboat your what's it called construction site we have cranes that help lift heavy materials up okay multi-story buildings certain types of what exercise equipment also have what pulley system in them or cloth line a cloth line work as a pulley although it does not provide any mechanical advantage but it makes it easier for you to sun your cloth and what hang your cloth is it not look at this man by my left if he pulls the wheel to his right hand side cloth that he dried will come okay why if he wants to sew more cloth he will pull it to his left hand side so if he pulls the wheel to his left hand side he will enable him to what to sew cloth and move them afar do you get it now yes this is a the crane the crane is a good example of what using a compound pulley system to lift every object using a much smaller input force you will see crane in many different places such as what construction sites where tall buildings are what being made they are also attached to the end of freight ships used to haul cargo on and off a boat All right so this is a setup of the crane we are talking about so no matter where they are the main function is to lift every object okay this is a different function from what the pulley system in the cloth line so this one gives you a mechanical advantage let's now look at uh, gears what do you think are gears when we look at the gear the gear is actually similar to the pulley but the difference is that the gear have what we call teeth around the perimeter okay they have teeth in the perimeter of the world the we a single gear on its own is not able to accomplish any work okay as you will see shortly the reason or the functions of a gear are they change the direction of motion they increase force and they also increase what speed take note of history they change the direction of the of motion they increase force and they also increase the uh, speed i'm going to learn how it works to do this for these three things in order for this to happen the two gear teeth must interlock with each other to cause rotary motion which is also known as what a torque all right that rotary motion is also called a torque generated by force so this is a real setup of a gear if it is a single one it's not a gear the first gear is called the driving gear it is the one that generates the force to drive the second gear which is called the idle gear and then the idle gear will drive what the middle the the third gear which is called the what the driving gear driving gear will drive the idle gear and the idle gear will drive the middle gear all right so you get it now when you have a whole setup like this it is called a gear train okay? all that you must know is that they normally move in opposite direction okay for example if this first driving gear is going right observe the motion of the second will be going what left is it not or if it's going clockwise the second will be going anti-clockwise is it not and then to transfer the third motion to the first motion gears that are paired together in a system are called the gear train okay gear train always have at least one driving gear one driven gear okay they always work in opposite eh, directions of one another any gear in between the two are called the idle gear for example if you had a three gear train the first gear would be what the driving gear the second gear would be the idle gear and the third gear would be the what the driving gear so know the three okay the driving gear is also known as the input gear and the driving gear is also known as what the output eh, gear all right there are many types of gear different type of gear have been invented to suit specific purpose some gears are best as increasing force while others are better for increasing what speed so others are useful in changing the direction of what motion let's look briefly at some of these uh, type of gear a spore gear 
A spore gear is the most common type of gear. They can be found in washing machines, cloth dryers, wind up clocks, and electric air screwdrivers. Spore gears have parallel axes. When they mean parallel axis, it means they are moving in the same path. Okay, and then they also have a straight teeth. Typically, this type of gear make loud noise as a tone because of the what impact of the teeth colliding against one another. So we are talking about the spot gear. This is what we mean. Okay, you can see the teeth colliding over the other one. So we are talking about the spot gear. This is what we mean. You can see the teeth colliding over the other one. This causes them to what make loud noise. That's for the spot gear. All right. This is the front view and this is the side view. Let's look at uh, rack and pinion. A rack and a pinion gear is most commonly used to steer vehicles like cars and what trucks. Okay, they allow rotary motion to be converted into linear motion. Okay, so as it is rotating, to be pushing the device what forward. That's what we mean. As the up one is rotating, the other one will be going what forward the wigs known as the pinion and the straight gear is known as the rack okay and then the top the round top wig there is called the pinion while the straight one is called the, the rack right let's look at one gear the one gear is a combination of a circular gear and a cylinder shaped gear okay that it looks like a screw these types of gear are great for generating a lot of force all right the one gear the worm drives the way but the we cannot drive the one this makes them great in scenarios that require a locking mechanism so we think of things that are used to lock each other due to movement of a gear we use the one gear do you get it now yes use the one gear for example they can be used to run conveyor belt in factories to act as what a break in the line they are also found on the end of what guitars to tighten strings and keep them from slipping out of a home so we'll look at the one gear the one has the ability to move over the other one but the other one doesn't have the ability to move do you see it now yes that is just the trick between the about the one gear okay let's look at our gear work how do gear work okay each specific type of gear has a what slightly different way of functioning but in overall situation or overall uh, declaration they function in the same way okay in order for a gear train to function it must first be what driven by a sort of force you can call that force external force that force can come from human or it can come from a engine okay engine of a machine in human driven trains the driving gear will usually have a crank attached to it so that a person can begin to what generate a rotary motion so it gives you where you turn it if you are doing the human driven gear it gives you where you what turn it so when you turn it it will generate that rotary motion which will transfer to the other part of the what machine a bicycle is a great example of a crank powered gear train okay with bicycles the great teeth are what are meshed together using what a chain rather than directly touching one another is it not in a way they are like a pulley system and gear train combined into one okay a person's legs supply the force which drives the input gear and the effort is transmitted to the output gear which are attached to the pack wheel and make it what spin right the driver has two options they can choose a gear that requires very little force okay if you choose a gear that requires very little force you will cover what a very short uh, distance result yes but if you choose a gear that requires a lot of force, you make it harder to pedal, but it allows you 
to move what a large what distance or amount okay so it depends on your choice of a gear you can see it as you will learn you can see there's a big which is the driving gear is bigger than what the driven gear is so you understand this as we go on right in a machine driven gear train the driving gear is attached to an axle that is attached to an engine or a motor that generates the rotary motion the gear transfer that motion through the idle gear to the output device such as a wheel on a car okay we are looking at uh, the principle of gear in a uh, real life okay so you can see the diagram here is it not yes you can see the diagram here as it is moving it is generating world motion can you see it yes that is how the car setup is so let's look at the benefit of using gear gear can be used to gain a mechanical advantage which means they can give you a large output force for a small input force. Let me take it again. They can give you a large output force for a small input force. Gear offer another advantage as well, which is to increase what speed. But if you would have to increase this the speed, then you will have to decrease the what the force because both of them don't go together. Okay, it's either speed is increased force is decrease or force is increase speed is what decrease do you get it now when speed is increased force is a uh, decrease and when force is increased speed is what decrease when we combine two gears of the same size there is not any force or speed advantage why because the two gear have equal size is it not therefore the force pulling the other one we transfer to the second one and we shared evenly this type of gear train are typically used to change the direction of what force so this kind of gear whereby the two wheels are equal they don't provide much mechanical advantage is it not yes but where they are useful is that they help to change the direction of what of a force so it helps you to turn easily <clears throat> which of course we said is another use of gear okay we have already seen this type of gear at work in the rack pinion section earlier on is it not yes now take a look at this picture okay this is the diagram of how it looks like see both of them have equal uh what is it called size all right so when one pushes the other one it will turn because the force being transferred to this side we counterbalance by the other we therefore it will have to turn so it's basically used what to change the direction of what of the force mm. when we combine two gears of different sizes then we get either a force advantage or a speed advantage depending on how these two gears are what are arranged what are we saying let's look at what we are saying the order of the gear will determine what type of advantage it was again look at what we are saying for force to increase let's look at it if we want to increase the force this is what we do a small gear will be driving what a bigger one in order to increase force you will couple one smaller gear with one larger gear the smaller gear would be the driving gear and the larger one would be the what driving gear they would allow someone to use less effort to generate significant amount of air force the trade-off is that you would have to spin the smaller gear many times to get the large gear towards the rotation okay that is the trade-off there but the, the the truth is that you move with a great force do you understand the other one will move with a great force because it's bigger you get it now but this this other way around whereby you are using a bigger gear to drive a smaller gear then you have increased speed however the force will be decreased why because you will need what greater force to move this force a uh, gear so in order to increase speed 
you also couple one smaller gear with one bigger gear or larger gear however in this case the larger gear would be the driving gear and the smaller gear would be the driving gear a small rotation on the driving gear to get many rotation on the driving gear the trade-off is that it would require more effort force to achieve the same advantage you see it now yes let's look at pulleys and gears in use okay when we look at our everyday life and then we look at main devices we discover that they apply pulleys and gears in use okay this system any system that is driven by electricity or require the burning of fossil fuel to function we have a negative impact on our environment is it not it's our responsibility to manage how much we are using and relying on these machines in our daily lives obviously it will be impossible to completely avoid using any of those devices but we can manage the amount we use them and do our best to use our own effort as much as we can is it not yes for example instead of having our parents drive us to school we could bike or walk and then there is an added bonus of getting some physical work activity which of course is exercise instead of drying our clothes in a machine we could use a yacht a cloth line there are many opportunities for us to rely less on machines and more on ourselves and i believe we can think of many is it not yes so before you watch this video i want you to know that there are positive effect and there are negative effect of uh, these machines we have uh, discussed and then uh, as we try to live our everyday life because we can't really do without gear you wake up in the morning you blend your food you what is it called you open your window all these are pulleys and gears in use all right we can't really do without them, but we can try to do less with those that pollute the environment. For example, your car, when you when it is driven, it emits what carbon monoxide, is it not? There are times that you might not necessarily need to drive, you might just use your bicycle or bicycle to, to, to go to where you want to go, okay? So we are looking at managing what the negative effect and making good use of what the positive effect watch and learn more about uh, gear and uh, pulley at work okay So we'll just delete the flywheel and we're going to attach some gears to it. Now this is two gears. Two gears connected together are a gear train. A gear train is more than one gear that are meshed together. So we'll take this gear train and attach it to the motor. When we start the motor, the gear train starts to spin. The first gear, the one attached to the motor, is called the driving gear. A driving gear supplies the power or the force for a gear train. The second gear in the gear train is known as the driven gear. A driven gear does not have its own source of power. Now notice that these two gears are spinning 
in opposite directions. That happens when we mesh gears together. If we take a close look at the two gears, we can see that the teeth push against each other. The driving gear pushes down on the teeth of the driven gear, so both gears move down in the middle. And that means they end up both spinning in opposite directions. But what's more interesting is making them spin at different speeds. And we can do that simply by changing the number of teeth. And what I'm going to do is double the number of teeth on the driven gear. And we'll start the electric motor and we can see that the driven gear now spins much slower than the driving gear. Now this is an awful lot like low gear on your bicycle. You can be pedaling very fast, but the wheel at the back of your bicycle turns slow. This would be like low gear. Now we can do the opposite by decreasing the number of teeth on the driven gear. So if we do that and start our electric motor, we can see that our driven gear now spins much faster. This is like high gear on your bicycle. When you turn the pedals on your bicycle, the back wheel spins even faster than your pedaling. So this is like high gear. So in summary, we've learned about driving gears, driven gears, gear trains, and that you can change the speed of gears just by changing the number of teeth. Welcome back from that video. I believe from this video you now know what a pulley is and then you know the types of pulley that we have, okay? You now know how a pulley also works, okay? You now primary, uh, you know how the fix, the movable and the what compact pulley works, okay? You now know the practical use of pulley in our daily lives. You now know what a gear is and how it differs from what a pulley. You also know the applications of gear and pulley in everyday life, is it not? You know positive and negative impact in the world environment. That now brings us to the end of today's lesson.